Hi everyone, this is Khaled from GNS3 Talk. Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to install um, VirtualBox uh, in, um, in Ubuntu 11.10. Uh, you could follow the same method if you want to install it on 12.0.4, uh, the uh, long term uh, distribution. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm going to jump to uh, uh, to Google and see if I could find where VirtualBox is. So, VirtualBox is located at this particular website, which is virtualbox.org. I'm just going to click on download. Okay, um, I'm going to end up with this packet with this uh, page. Um, so, given that I'm running it on Linux, I'm going to install it for Linux. Uh, 11.10, as I said earlier. So, and given that I'm using the 64 bit uh, distribution, I'm going to click on AMD 64. How do you find out which version you're running? Well, as a Linux user, you probably know which version you, uh, you're running. So, yep, it says 11.10 and it's a 64-bit. Alright, so click on AMD64 and it will, uh, you can, uh, start downloading the package. I've already downloaded it into my uh, download folder and you can see it's about 65 meg in, in size. Alright, so uh, we're done with this. And um, Once you go to your download folder, given that this is a Debian package, you just double-click on it and this should bring up the uh, Ubuntu Software Center. I'll just wait for it. Alright, so it says it's asking me to install it. I don't really need to install it because it's already been installed, but look, uh, this looks like a bug either on the Ubuntu Software Center or on the, uh, on the, on the um, Debian package itself because you can see that the tick is already here. Alright, so I'm gonna close it off because I don't really need it. Now, how do you find it? Just go here and just go VirtualBox, and you could see it actually came up as the first um, first result. Uh, you click on it, and you launch uh, the application. If you're not really familiar with what VirtualBox is, it's a uh, uh, how, how do I put it? In? It's similar to VMware. It's uh, create virtual machines within your actual machine. Uh, I'm not really going ahead and install uh, the operating system inside uh, VirtualBox in my user access mode. If you followed my early videos of how to install GNS3, you would know why. Okay, L wha the reason um, I'm not really going ahead and install my operating system in uh, VirtualBox in the user access mode is because I have GNS3 uh, running in root access mode, and the reason. I'm um, accessing GNS3 from the user root access mode is uh, I'll be needing to use the adapters network interface cards at the back of my PC uh, to connect into real uh, networking equipment like uh, routers, switches and all that sort of equipment. So uh, for a GNS3 to run and to connect to the VirtualBox operating systems uh, both software or programs need to be run in a root access mode. Alright, so how do we run uh, VirtualBox in root access mode? You just go to terminal and go gk sudo. gk uh, launches an application in a uh, uh, graphical user interface um, format. And just type in VirtualBox. As it's asking me for my password. Just put the password in. Alright. Now, you could see that I've already installed two different operating systems, the Viata and the Windows XP Pro. Uh, for you to run, to install an, an, a new operating system, I'm just going to uh, run uh, through one quickly. So you just go new. Uh, new. Next, uh, given that you will be installing Windows XP or Linux or whatever version of operating system you are, uh, that you want to use, just leave it as XP, go next. Uh, 192 should be fine. I've already allocated about 1 gig for the for this one. So next, uh, startup disk. Yep, create a new disk. Uh, look, the, the choice between these ones could be uh, fairly hard. I've, uh, the, my Windows XP, which is sitting here, I've, uh, I've created a VMDK uh, disk image which should be read by both VMware as well as VirtualBox. 
so depending which uh, sort of uh, sort of disk that you want to create is up to you so go next uh, dynamically allocated go next how much space that you want to put up uh, up to you five gig sounds good okay, it's not letting me yep that's good go next and create and then you click on create again all right so we have a Windows XP um, a virtual disk uh, sitting but it's not really it has no um, no operating system allocated to it yet all right so what do we do now uh, you just go right click settings and go via these uh, tabs one by one advanced just leave it as is description is the same system you can adjust the memory system memory from here uh, processor I have a, a four core processor but there's no option for me to choose to allocate the four cores it says one CPU so I'm only using one CPU anyway so that we don't really need to do anything display yeah you could enable 3d if you want uh, storage um, for you to start installing operating system you probably you probably need to uh, you need to have a CD-ROM obviously and uh, and can, uh, and put the uh, Windows XP CD in it um, or what you could do if you have a uh, um, if you have an image I don't know ISO image or something uh, you could just go here and you just choose a virtual disk or CD image and that's where you actually could run Windows XP Oh, sorry. Any uh, any operating system uh, from an, an image file you download off the internet. All right, audio. Just leave it. It's already ticked. It's already enabled. What's important is network. Uh, depending on how many adapters you want in your operating system, you could have up to four adapters. Um, and you could well, you could see that there's all there's about about five adapters that I've created how do we get up to five adapters uh, I'm going to cancel it then I'm gonna go back again into this window so go cancel uh, go file and preferences preferences these are the global preferences uh, for the entire uh, for any for all the uh, uh, operating system uh, I don't really care about any value so I'm gonna jo jump to network and you could see from network I have one two three four uh, about five network adapters that I created so basically just go add and then edit and this I have no idea what these values are um, look you could always adjust these values in your operating system so I'm gonna cancel it I don't really need five adapters so I'm gonna uh, click on that minus button and click OK all right, I'm gonna go back again to this uh, new virtual machine, uh, virtual uh, machine that I just created. Go to settings and go to network. All right, so I'm I'm looking at adapter one. And now for you to connect your operating system to any GN3 router, you should enable the network obviously, and then you need to choose the host only adapter. And from the host only adapter, you could choose whichever uh, interface that you want to choose. So VirtualBox one, one. And uh, if you uh, go to Advanced, just leave these values as they are. I would say that it's better to untick the cable connected. And because this cable connected, once you hook up your operating system or the interface uh, card of your operating system into your router in GNS3, it will come up. Adapter two and three, you do exactly the same thing. You just enable it, then go and host only adapter. So enable it, host only adapter, choose a different interface, and untick this one. And that's it. So and you keep doing the same thing with the other one. So this is uh, only. I'm just gonna choose adapter one for now. Serial ports, these values. There's. Um, I mean, there's no need for you to uh, to play with them unless you know what you're doing. All right, I'm gonna go to cancel. Now you just power on, right click, and you start or you just highlight it and then click on start here and given that you have your uh, ISO image is connected as I showed you before or your Windows XP CD or your Windows op or any operating system CD is inside your um, CD-ROM you just start the uh, virtual machine and wait for it to prompt and just install uh, the operating system normally alright so I'm gonna delete this one because I'm not really gonna, uh, I don't really need it 
and delete all the files. Yep. Now, uh, let's say that you've already installed the operating system. All you have to do is just right click and start it, or just click on this one, start again, and the operating system will, st will start as normal. I'm not really going ahead with it now uh, because I need to show you how to connect this one to GNS3, and this will waste a bit of time. All right, I'm going to close uh, uh, VirtualBox now. And then I'm going to jump to Genesis 3. Put in your password. I don't really need to create any project. Now what I need to do now is go and set up the virtual uh, how do I connect Genesis 3 into VirtualBox. So you go to edit, you go to preferences, VirtualBox, leave this this first page uh, intact. Uh, you don't really need to change anything. If you followed my steps one uh, to how to install Genesis 3 in my initial videos you would uh, you would have this value uh, press on uh, click on test settings and you could see it has already successfully started I ran into a strange issue when I first installed uh, virtual uh, virtual box I ran into an error says failed to start XDO tool so the solution to this problem was you need to download the XDO tool uh, package so you go sudo apt-get install X, XDO tool and enter and given that I've already installed it uh, it hasn't been installed but yep you click on yes and just wait for it to install and you should end up with this message that says it has uh, the, the VirtualBox API has already started now we need to jump into the second tab and you could see that I have nothing set up here now remember we've launched the NS3 in root access mode and we've already set up our virtual box in root access mode so we would expect the virtual uh, the GNS3 to be able to at least connect or con uh, connect to the virtual box and show us the virtual machines within that uh, uh, virtual box so I'm gonna go refresh and drop down menu and you can see both operating systems that I created initially are there I'm going to use XP only for now so click on XP uh, the number of NICs look um, I'm not really sure how this works but in my uh, Windows XP I set up into the, the four adapters all four of them so I'm gonna choose four here so they they both match just leave everything automatic I don't really need to change any uh, to change any of these and I'm gonna click on save and you can see that the Windows XP uh, virtual machine has been added into this Genesis 3 list I'm gonna go apply and OK alright fingers crossed I'm going now to um, bring one of the routers and done just scroll down and bring the virtual box guest just to see if I could rename it just put it name it as a PC use fast Ethernet to connect fast Ethernet 0.0, .0 into the uh, Ethernet 2 adapter uh, the, the reason Ethernet 1 adapter is grayed out I believe it's because the uh, it's uh, it's used for management and that's it I have uh, we probably need to do I, I need to do more research and find out why uh, why Ethernet 1 adapter is is grayed out so go Ethernet 2 untick it and well let's hope that uh, everything is fine so I'm gonna play Genesis 3 is starting and you could see that even VirtualBox has already started my Windows XP machine is starting now okay, let me just, let me just move this away I'm gonna double click and get uh, console for router 1 just let me change the profile alright so we got the operating system and we have the console for the router alright to find out which uh, adapter on the operating system is connected to my router just hover your mouse on top of this and you can see that PC is on Ethernet 2 
Now, if I go back to the Windows XP machine, you can see that we have four adapters and there's only one with limited connectivity. Uh, let me just go to my my computer, my network places, view network connections. Uh, that's what we need to be at. All right. Uh, so if you go back to GNS3, you could see it says Ethernet 2. Let me just hover my mouse on this one, and you can see it says adapter 2. Um, if you remember from VirtualBox, when I asked you to untick the automatically connected button, you could see that that's what I meant. I mean, it's easier for you to understand. It, so it's easier for you to find out which adapter you're actually currently connected to. Now, you could see that there is no limited or no connectivity. The reason is because there is a physical connection between the router 1 and PC, but there is no layer 2 or layer 3 uh, connectivity. Uh, what I'm going to do, so let me just go disable it, enable it, and I don't think anything would happen. While we're waiting for this one to happen, uh, to, uh, to acquire any IP address, which, which is not really going to happen, I'm going to set... A network between the PC and the router, and we are use. I'm going to set the IP address of the router to be dot one, and router one is going to be the DHCP server. So yep, router one will be DHCP server that will be assigning the IP address into PC one. Yep, look, the uh, you can see that the network adapter is still acquiring an IP address. All right, so. Let me jump to the router and start setting up the uh, the DHCP settings. So I'm going to call it test. I'm going to go network 1.1.1.0 slash 24. All right. If you go back to uh, to the uh, Windows XP, you could see that says uh, lock layer connection 2 has limited or no connectivity. And the reason is, yep, as I said before, there is a physical connectivity, but there is no layer 2, no layer 3 uh, connection. All right, so let me go back to the router. So we set up the network. I need to set up the default router, which is 1.1.1.1. Uh, this IP address is going to be the IP address of my router. All right, so... Okay, exit and go, go to the interface fast ethernet 0.0 IP address 1.1.1.1 and 255.255.255.0 and I'm going to go no shot okay no shot the interface should come should come up if you are impatient impatient like me uh, the easiest way of uh, to test whether the local layer connection has received an IP address from the DHCP is right click, disable then enable, or you could just wait for uh, for the adapter to gain IP address. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to right click, disable it, enable it, and it should acquire an IP address from my DHCP server, which is the router one. Here we go. You could say it says connected. All right, so double click on it go support and you can see it received a 1.1.1.2 slash 24 uh, which falls within the same range of IP address that I created alright let me just go to the router itself and see if I could ping it ping 1.1.1.2 voila and you can see it's 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 already connected alright so uh, I believe that's about it we've uh, downloaded uh, VirtualBox we've uh, installed it we connected this, uh, the operating system installed within VirtualBox into GNS3 and this should help, uh, should help us a lot in uh, connecting uh, the virtual routers into the virtual machines uh, within uh, VirtualBox. I hope uh, this video has been informative. Uh, please leave your comment and any feedback on my uh, channel. And thank you for watching.